Um, take your Bibles, if you would. Let's go to First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter two. Let's begin reading together in unison, so verse 11 down to verse 20. So that's 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11. As you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father and of his children, that you should walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. For ye brethren became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as ye have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill their sins all away, for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in part, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. Father, we thank you again, Lord, for this day. And Lord, as we look now into your precious word, O oh Lord, feed our souls. God, may you help me today to feed your sheep and to be the right kind of under-shepherd, Lord, that I should be. Bless the message, Father. It is from you. It is your message. And God, we shall thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The verse I bring to your attention here is verse 18 today. Where it says again, Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Have you grown the Lord enough now to notice at times that it seems you are undergoing spiritual oppression? You, there's this hindrance there. And it's hard to put your finger on, but, but it's there. It's real. It's real. Um, we are in a spiritual warfare. And I've been noticing, it seems like as close as we get to the meeting, that Satan is trying to hinder us as a church and hinder even our home. I've noticed it lately, this past week, <laughs> me and Miss Eva, we, uh, you know, most of the time we get along pretty good. But <laughs> we're like, We've been aggravating each other, just just mm -hmm. irritating, just little irritants. You know what I mean? Right. Nothing crazy, nothing you know. Yeah. But just man, it's almost like we can't even care on a conversation very long before we're at each other's throats. It's like <laughs> and last night I was like, honey, we just gotta stop talking. <laughs> we just gotta stop talking to each other for a while, okay? Because we can't get along right now. <laughs> so for a little while we didn't talk, but uh, it wasn't very long. I had to talk to her. She's my sweetheart, right? Yeah. But but I, I I did I began thinking about it, praying about it, and I said, Lord, what is this? And it came to my mind what Brother Paul had been through—a hindrance, right? See, Satan wants to pit us against each other, if he can. We would like to see us fighting among ourselves instead of fighting against Him, against the world, against our own flesh. Your brethren are not your enemy. We're on the same team. Me and my wife, 
We're on the same team. She's not my enemy. I'm not her enemy. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, there can be those irritations and aggravations that we go through with each other in relationships that we have. I realize that Satan can be behind these things to cause us to have a bad spirit. And so the Lord cannot bless and use us as He wants to. So that our church will be disturbed right before the meeting. So that God's full blessing will not be on it. We need God's full blessing on this meeting. We need to pray. We need to pray hard. Will you do that with me? For the next two weeks especially? As we get closer? Satan doesn't like this. We're going to be preaching the gospel in the outdoors. Okay? For the public of Cornwall to hear. We're going to be putting up posters around town, getting the word out on the radio and uh, on online, different ways of letting people know that there's hope right, in Lord Jesus Christ. Satan doesn't like that. Okay? So he's going to fight against He's going to hinder us. He hindered the Apostle Paul. That's what he said. Right? And if he can hinder the Apostle Paul, surely he can hinder us. <laughs> Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Hinder means to prevent, or stop, impede, obstruct. Uh, it can mean, mean simply to retard, to check the progression of, to render slow in motion. You know, like in the winter time, we all know about the winter, right? We don't, we don't want to think about it now, but since spring is here. <laughs> Somebody got a really bad wind, you got sleet and snow coming at you, you know, and you're just kind of, it's almost like you're, you're, you're struggling to walk against the, all that, that wind and the sleet and the snow, right? You're fighting, and it's slowing you down. You can feel that spiritually sometimes. And you can't really explain it, but it's like something is there. It's like, it's there, but it's not there. It's, it's real, though. You know what I mean? It's not a physical thing. So you can't explain it in physical terms. It's, it's spiritual. It's a spiritual pressure, hindrance. Trying to check your, your motion as you try to live for God and serve the Lord and do what's right. It's just ugh, it's pressing against you. Okay? These things are very real for a Christian, for a believer. Apostle Paul experienced it. And we shall too. Right? Especially when we want to do what's right. Especially when you step out and do something for God by faith. He's going to get angry. Or his devils. He might not be the devil himself. He's not omnipresent, but he has devils. He has fallen angels that serve him. Work for him. And I'm sure one of them is probably assigned to this area. Assigned to Cornwall. Okay? And when we're standing up for God, listen, uh, they look at this as their territory. Okay? Satan is the God, so-called, not a real God, God of this world. Right? The prince and power of the air. He controls this world system to a degree. Of course, you know, he's on a leash. You know, he's only goes so far on God will allow. But we're messing with their kingdom right now on this earth. Right? Of course, we're on the protection of God. They can't do nothing to us unless God allows it. But boy, we can sure feel that pressure at times. And you can wonder, man, what is going on? You know? I was wondering this past week, you know, man, what is going on? Me and my wife, we usually get along pretty good. <laughs> it's like I couldn't say anything to her, she can't say anything to me. It's like we're irritated, not right each other. It's like, what if this ain't right? What is going on? This is this is outside of us. This is it's more to it. You know? Yeah. It's real. This fight. It's spiritual. So, number one, if I could say, realize the hindrance is from the enemy. Um, he's that roaring lion, walking about seeking whom may devour. He wants to devour us, he wants to get us distracted serving God, living for God, and doing what's right, and pleasing Him, and having a sweet spirit. It's when you have that sweet spirit that God can use you. Irritated, aggravated, 
depressed and angry and mad and upset, God can't use us then, right? Christ, remember, He was meek and lowly. We talked about I think on Wednesday a little bit. He was our lowly Savior. Meek, kind, loving, caring, had a sweet spirit. The devil wants to get us fighting amongst ourselves. Fighting among the brethren. Churches sometimes get like that. <coughs> Little cliques in the church. Mm. Now we're a pretty small church, but mm. talking about larger churches, right? Mm. This group over here, don't get along. This group over here. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It's true. And, and it's yeah, the same it church. Happens. It's the same church. Because they had a disagreement over something. Yeah. You know? Okay, sure. They want a burgundy <coughs> carpet, and the other group wanted blue carpet. <laughs> and the blue carpet people won. And the other people didn't get the color they wanted to know. Yeah. Ain't gonna talk to them. Right. It can happen, right? And Satan gets in that stuff. Yeah. And ruins our spirit. Yeah. And we get so caught up in these many times are little things. You know, that don't really matter. But they you got our, the devil we use them as a distraction pull us away from the Lord. Mm. So realize this hindrance is from the enemy, okay? Realize who your enemy is. And realize also that this battle cannot be fought in a physical manner. It's spiritual. It must be fought on our knees. Mm. Right? In times of weakness, in times of irritation or aggravation or whatever you're facing spiritually, yeah. Go aside somewhere as soon as possible. Get on your knees. Talk to God. That's how to combat it. Christian, that's your resource. Prayer to God. It's our resource. It's, it's where we find strength. That's where you get that grace. Right? We can go boldly unto the throne of grace to find help in time of need. Do you need grace? God has grace for you. We got to call on it. We just got to say, "Hold on a second, man. Something ain't right. Yep. This don't seem right. Yep. What's wrong with my spirit? Why am I irritated? Why am I aggravated? What's wrong with me? This is not right. This is not God's will. Something's wrong. Don't just keep going on like that. Because then you might justify your actions." Well, I've got a right to be aggravated and angry with you and irritated with you and you're... No, hold on, hold on a second. As a child of God, if we're mature in the Lord, we should never be. Because we can cast all our care on the Lord. All of it. A-L-L. All. Doesn't matter how big or how small. We can cast on the Lord. And He'll carry it for us. And He lightens our load. Right? So we can be light again. Right? Free to walk with Jesus and please Him, honor Him, and walk in joy. We'll just keep casting our care on Him. But we've got to do that. Because it's a spiritual warfare. Realize that this is time for fasting and prayer. Certain situations, when it gets rough and tough, and you feel like you're really being pressed by the devil, it may be time for fasting and prayer. It may be time to pull away from certain things and, and fast. That's right. And... Uh, you know, the disciples, remember the, uh, the lunatic, uh, the child, had the, the devil, and they, they couldn't cast him out. And the father says, I, you know, I went to your disciples. They couldn't cast him out. Of course, the Lord gave his disciples because they should have had enough faith. They should have been able to believe in the Lord. They had the power to do so. They could cast him out. And the Lord healed the, the young man. The Lord said, this cannot come but by fasting and prayer. Maybe sometimes we're just not as serious about the things we ought to be. And we're not willing to make the steps and the changes or what we need to do in order to get the power of God, in order to get the, the strength and the grace from God that we need. 
we think that we can just keep on doing the same thing as we always have and it oh, it'll be all right. You know, maybe we need to make some some changes. Maybe we need to let God know that, Lord, I need you. And uh, call on you. And, you know, deny ourselves. Pull back from some things, right? And show the Lord, Lord, I, I'm sincere in this. Oh, God, please help me. Right? And God sees it. God will bless that. The disciples were maybe casting, <coughs> trying to cast out the, the devil out of the child in their own strength. But they need to fast and pray over that. And they would have been able to do it. And we could do so much more, I believe, sometimes if we just get serious about this thing. Realize how much we need the touch of God, how much we need the power of God in our life. And don't just take for granted, you know, that God's always going to be there to catch us when we fall. Well, yes, He's loving, kind, and long suffering with us and patient. At the same time, God. I think we'll maybe withdraw himself for a time and maybe even allow us to be tempted or allow Satan to attack us a little, kind of like Job. Remember Job? And to test our heart to see what we'll do now as he withdraws himself a bit from us. Will you realize, hey, hey, God, God, where are you? Uh, Lord, Lord, I need you. Or will you just blindly just go on, oh, I'll, I'll be all right. And Satan can get advantage of us. Right? Oh, Christian, let's take it seriously. Sometimes we need to fast and pray. Will you fast and pray over the meeting coming up? Lord's touch. We do. We, we need it. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to fast and what to do and how to do it. You just you seek the Lord about that, okay? However, God leads you to it. You do that. Alright? But we need, oh, so much God's touch on this meeting. And I don't want there to be any hindrance. I don't want it to be me. I don't want it to be you or anything. I want God's full blessing to come down. I want those showers of blessing to come down. Not the real showers, but the showers of blessing. We're praying for good weather. But the showers of blessing we need. And then realize that we can be victorious over this hindrance. I like how Paul puts it in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter number 10 and verse 4. He says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Through who? Through God. Yeah. To the pulling down of strongholds. These are strongholds around us. These spirits, these demons, these devils, they're, they're around their kingdom on this earth. They're strongholds. Cornwall is a stronghold of Satan. Yes. Satan has a grip on these souls. And he ain't gonna let them go easy. That's why it's tough here. Right? We're, we're plowing tough ground. We've got a lot of rocks. It's kind of hard. But the Lord can do a work if we'll just remain faithful. Amen. There will be those that will be saved. There will be families that will be saved. That's God. And God can add to the church. Mm -hmm. We can see genuine salvation. Mm -hmm. People like Wayne. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wayne was real. Yes. You know it was. If you, if you met him, you know Wayne was real. Mm -hmm. He had the real thing. So true. I miss him. Yes. Looking forward to seeing him again. One day we'll be reunited. Amen? Amen. <laughs> what a blessed promise. Thank the Lord for the victory we have through God. If God be for us, who could be against us? Romans 8.31 I still believe we're more than conquerors to Him that loved us. We can be victorious over this hand, but we must be willing to perceive what's going on. And not just go on in our stubbornness, and justify our bad attitude or whatever. But let's realize, hey, I'm getting upset here. I'm losing my temper. This isn't right. God, what's going on? Lord, God, where are you? <laughs> Seek after God. Seek after the Lord for His help. 
Lord could be testing you. Like Job, right? Withdrawing himself for a time. You gonna trust me? Hmm? You gonna trust me? You're gonna keep walking on your own stubbornness, or you're gonna trust me? What are you gonna do? Right? God is testing us as a church. Do we really want God to meet with us in this meeting and in, in a great way? Save souls and churches, God's people be revived. Do we really want it? How bad do we want it? Because that's the question. How bad do you want God? Hmm? How bad do you want God in your daily life? How bad do you need God every day? Do you just need Him a little bit? Or do you need Him a lot of bit? How, how much do you need God? We need Him a lot, don't we? Amen. And then realize that God has given us the recipe for revival. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Our reading for today. Did you read your Bible reading today? If you did, you read Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. This is God's recipe for revival for His people, for God's people. Revival comes from God's people getting right with Him. Right. And right. then, when God's people get right, then God will bless, and then souls will be saved. But as long as our hearts are not right, our church is not right, or where we need to be with God, we'll not have that full blessing. But if we'll obey this old verse, this was written a thousand years before Christ, but it's still true today, brethren. It's still true today. God can give us a revival if we'll obey this verse. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If you don't have an underlined your Bible, underline it. If my people which are called by my name shall, number one, humble themselves. Starts with humility, doesn't it? We've got to humble ourselves. Realize our need. Just like we realized when we came to the cross how much we needed Christ. Oh Lord, please save me. <laughs> Amen. With that same humility, we come back to God. Oh God, please, Lord, walk with me. Please, Lord, bless me. Oh God, I need You. I need Your presence. I want to be in Your presence. I don't want to just know He was my Father and we have a casual relationship. Lord, I want to walk with You. I want to be close to You. And so we humble ourselves before God. And then number two, pray, right? Get along with Him. Call on the Lord. Cast those cares on the Lord. Don't try to carry them in yourself. But give them to God. Let's pray. Seek My face. Seek after God. Seek Him in His Word. Lord, what do You have for me today? Lord, I need something. Lord, give me something for this day. And You'll do it. If You'll seek His face, and then turn from your wicked ways. And then when we do that, He will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. This is true for our community. This is true for Canada. This is true for the world. Unless we will to give up our sin, turn from our wicked ways, those things that we know in our life are not pleasing to God. Let's turn from them. Say, God, no more. I forsake it. God, you can have it. I give it up. Amen. Then, God will hear. He'll hear our prayers. He'll forgive our sin. And He'll heal us as a people. This is a promise. This is a recipe of revival. So, don't give up. Back there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul if you look at the very next chapter, chapter 3, he didn't give up. He was hindered of a Satan. But he kept at it. It wasn't God's will or God didn't allow him by that hindrance from Satan to be with the Thessalonians or at the church of Thessalonica at that particular time, but God made another way. Okay? Uh, he had a brother, Timothy, that was his companion. Uh, young minister that he was training. So he sent Timothy in chapter 3 to the church of Thessalonica to minister to the church. God will always make a way if you'll trust Him. Amen?
We've got to trust God. Believe God. Well, it looks impossible. It doesn't look like it's going to work out. God can make a way when it seems impossible. God provides. Keep trusting God. Keep believing God. Just because you're hindered doesn't mean that all this Christian life is just not working out for you. And you can get depressed, right? Discouraged. Well, I just can't have that close walk with God like other people. That's Satan lying to you. Don't believe that, alright? Look down at verse 11. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 11. Now God Himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. The Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. To the end, He may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all His saints. And what wonderful, encouraging words. Paul gives to the church there. Increasing in love one toward another. This is what we mean. Getting along. Amen? Having one heart, one mind, one spirit as God's people. Then we can get things done. But as long as there's fightings and amongst ourselves and irritations and aggravations and we're upset and our spirit isn't right, God can't help. We need God's full blessing. I want God's full blessing on, on my life, on my home, and on our church, on Cornwall. I want to see revival in Cornwall. I want to see revival on the island. Among the Aquasasni Mohawk. Wouldn't it be a blessing to see a church over there one day on the island? Wouldn't that be great if we had like a sister church? <laughs> he said, Pastor, that's impossible. I don't think that can happen. Where's your faith? We must believe God. God allows him to have it. God wants to have it. It will happen. I would like to be a part of it if God would allow me to. <laughs> Amen? Wouldn't that be exciting? God can do it. Yes. We must be faithful. And we must be aware, perceive okay, what's going on sometimes. Because it's a spiritual warfare. We can be oppressed and things are going on. It's like, yeah, I can't explain this. Something just doesn't seem right. <coughs> then you gotta, oh, God, where are you? Seek after God. Right? Seek the Lord. Follow that recipe for revival. Amen. Well, I guess you're all wondering what this is up here for. <laughs> what in the world does that have to do with the message, Pastor? Okay, well, we'll get into that just for a moment. Here. You know, it's God's design, His desire, ever since the beginning of creation to dwell with mankind. God likes company. Right? <laughs> he come down to the Garden of Eden, right? To, hey Eve, what you been doing today? <laughs> of course he already knew what you've been doing. Because <laughs> he's God. <laughs> but he likes companionship. He likes conversation. He likes us. Oh, how about that? God. All sufficient. He don't need nobody, no thing. And yet, He cares about us and wants to know us and be our companion. He's an incredible God. You wouldn't want Him to be any other kind of God. No, Aren't you glad we don't serve a mean God? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's a really nice God. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. And all He wanted us to do is just obey Him and have a sweet fellowship with Him. Yeah. Right? gave them a very, very simple test. He gave them abundance. An abundant place. All that they needed and more. And the simple test was just that one tree don't eat of that one. That was it. That wasn't really hard. Okay? Now just think, if you were God and you gave the creatures that you made a, a little test of obedience... We might have made it harder than that. Yeah. I probably would have. <laughs> I think that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. You know what I mean? Right. But it's just that one. He said, don't even do that. Yeah. So simple. Yeah. So simple. He's such a good God. Yeah. All He wants to do is just dwell with us, right? One day, it shall happen again. 
Revelation 21.3, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them. They shall be His people, and God Himself shall be with them and be their God. Mm. That's all He wants to do. He just wants to be with us. Mm. Those that have received Him, they'll get to be with Him. Be His companion for all eternity. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Back in the Old Testament, remember when the Israelites left Egypt and God had given them the law, the Ten Commandments, He instructed them to make a tabernacle. You remember that? Yes. And this is so that they could look towards a tabernacle and know that God's presence was there with them. And they could look to it for guidance. Because the pillar of cloud would be over top of the Ark of the Covenant, over the tabernacle. <coughs> the pillar of fire by night. And so, it was a reminder that God is with us. He's dwelling with us. And we looked at Him for guidance, right? Very important stuff. It says in Exodus chapter 25, verse 22, these words, And there I will meet with thee, and will commune with thee from above the mercy seat from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I give thee and command them to the children of Israel. That's Exodus 25, 22. So, this most holy part of the tabernacle, this here would be the, the tent, or the, the tabernacle, yeah. kind of overview here. Out here you have the outer court, and yeah. this perimeter around it. And so there's basically three sections. There's the outer court, there's the holy place, and here is the most holy place. This is where the Ark of the Covenant was. This is where God's presence was. This is where the Shekinah glory of God was. Right between the two cherubims, the two angels that were over top of the or part of the mercy seat. It's interesting, the mercy seat was over top of the law. <laughs> the blood was sprinkled over the law. Is that good? Sure. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. I can't please the law. I can't keep the law, but through Christ, I'm justified by His blood. The blood was sprinkled over top of the law. The, law, the, the covenants, the stone tablets were underneath yeah. where the blood was sprinkled. Yeah. Wow. Glory to God. And there was, was where the Shekinah glory of God was. There, there was no candlesticks in here. It didn't need to be. That's where the glory of God was. There was lots of light in there. Now, the high priest only go there once a year to offer the sins of the people, but we today, the veil has been rent twain, and we have access now yes. to the throne of God. Peter says, we're a royal priesthood. If you're saved, you're a priest. You can go in anytime you need to. Amen? And come boldly to the throne of grace because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank what a blessing, isn't it? All right, now, so we got the uh, brazen altar, the labor for cleansing. Go inside the holy place, you got the candlesticks, seven golden candlesticks. You got the table of showbread, altar of incense. Okay, so those are the pieces of furniture. And again, you got the, the three different areas here, okay? And this is a spiritual picture to us as believers. Mm -hmm. The outer courts, those in the outer court would be a picture of Christians who are saved. They come by the way of the cross. Right? The ultimate sacrifice was Christ. Mm. Of course, they would sacrifice the animals here on the brazen altar. Yes. By the way, these instruments were out of brass. These are all pure gold. Overlaid with pure gold. Mm. This judge, uh, brasses or brazen things are in the Bible a type of judgment. Uh, Christ took the judgment for all our sin on Himself. He was the Lamb of God slain for the sins of the world. Inside, you have the gold, the picture of uh, royalty, Christ Jesus. How we were in the family of God now and enjoy His, His holiness. But out here in the courtyard, we have a picture of those that are saved that are close to God because they're His children now. 
Inside the holy place, be a type of those that are closer to God. And then those in the most holy place, those that are closest to God. Where are you today? Are you in the courtyard? Are you close to God? Are you closer to God, the holy place? Or are you one of the closest to God in the most holy place? In His very presence. This is where we need to be. This is where God wants us to be. This is dwelling with God. Like Adam and Eve in the garden before the fall. This, this is right here. This is where He is most precious to us. He's the most precious thing in all the world. He's all we think about. Right. Right. Yes, Lord! Yes. What do you think about? Yeah. How much time do you spend thinking about Him? When you're in the most holy place, He's all you think about. Amen! Amen That's right. More than anything in the world, yeah. you think about Him. He's, he's on your lips, on your tongue, throughout the day. That's right. In order to get here, we start here. Praise God. It's going to take suffering, sacrifice, sanctification to get here. The labor is a type of little cleansing. The priest couldn't go in, so they cleansed themselves. So the labor was that the wash basin, right? So much suffering, so much sacrifice. Picture by the altar. So much suffering is needed on our part and sacrifice. If we would come to the holy place and be closer and closer to God, even to the most holy place. We must be willing to suffer. We must be willing to sacrifice for God. Our time, our money, our effort, everything. How will God lead you? Amen? And He will. You'd be willing to do that. God, here's my money. Here's my 10%. Here's my time. It's yours, God. Right? Make sure you're doing these things. Okay? God expects them from you. Right? That's part of your sacrifice. Do you want to get here? We must want to sacrifice. We must want to suffer. Suffer, suffer shame, reproach for Christ. Right? We want to be laughed at. We want to be mocked, ridiculed, persecuted in this life, in this world, in this realm of Satan, in his stronghold. In order to get here. We're not willing to put up with that. We're not willing to endure that by the grace of God. We're going to stay out here in the court. That's right. And God is going to keep bringing us back and say, you willing to sacrifice now? You willing to suffer now? You willing to be sanctified now? Cleanse you now? Yes. And until we are, we can't come into the whole place. And here's where you receive illumination from the Spirit of God. That oil, top of the Holy Spirit. Illuminates the showbread. Showbread, top of the Word of God. The bread of life. Right? There's twelve loaves. Six and six. Sixty-six books in the Bible. <laughs> Altar of incense, the type of our prayers and our praise unto God. Your prayers will be really sweet to God. And your praise will be really sweet to God. And you come to the holy place. <coughs> Very sweet. Amen. Like a sweet incense. You ladies ever have potpourri in your houses? Make it smell nice, right? You smell like apple pie or whatever, you know, those candles. Okay. Right. Our prayers are like that. Our praise to God is like that. God, oh, I like that. Amen. Blesses Him. Here we're getting closer to God. Well, we're close out here. We're saved. We're His children. We've been brought into the tabernacle court area, the courtyard. <coughs> We've trusted in Jesus. But maybe there's still some things in our life we're not willing to give up. We're not willing to go that far with God. So, we're not as close to Him as we could be, as we should be. But as we yield, as we submit to God, and here we find this submission. This is what's happening here, submission. You're, you're, you're willing to submit, and then you come to the holy place. And it gets sweeter and sweeter. 
Amen? And once you get here, this is where you want to stay. A bunch of, bunch of S's. Uh, uh, suffer, sacrifice, sanctification, submission, surrender, stay. Boy, I want you to get here. Amen? You don't, want to, you don't want to leave that place. It would be so thick. Like the cloud that filled the temple. The priest couldn't go in. God will get so thick in your life. Amen. This is where we need to be. It's where God wants you to be. To dwell with Him. To Him to be in your every thought. And tip your tongue throughout the whole day. Amen. What a wonderful picture. Now the devil, he's working his best to hinder you. Mm. Once, the, once you're in the court, you're saved. He can't kick you out of court. He has limited power. But he can sure try to prevent you from going any further by hindrance. So he's trying to hinder you from going through these curtains here. Okay? Keep you distant from God if He can encourage you in that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, read your Bible tomorrow. Yeah. It, it, oh, you don't have to pray right, right now. Mm -hmm. Disturbing your spirit about things and you get anxious, aggravated, or whatever. Not taking things to the Lord like you ought to. And then you're looking at others like they're your enemy, and when it's really yeah. the devil's yeah. it's a spiritual warfare. Right? Yeah. People, of God, your brethren, they're your friends. We're on the same team. And God still loves you. He just wants you to turn to Him. In the midst of the test, the trial that you're going through, the temptation, He wants you to turn to Him. Trust Him for His grace. He'll be there for you, but you got to turn to Him. you got to seek after Him. He's there. Christian, He's right there. He hasn't left you. Yeah. At times it seems like He might be a little distant, but it's for a reason. <laughs> you ever been, uh, maybe as a parent, and you've seen a look of fear in your child's face when maybe they strayed away from you a little bit, and you're in a busy place like a mall, yeah. mm -hmm. and then they turn around and they realize that you're not there, and you, they get afraid. <gasps> Where's mommy? Where's daddy? They think they're lost for just a second. Of course, you know right where they are. But there's a look of fear. Okay? Do we turn? Do we look for God? Or do we just go on our way? We need to be looking for the Lord. Seeking after Him. If we'll do that, we can break through those hindrances. By the grace of God, we can break through those hindrances from Satan. And we can enter in. Amen. We get closer to God. That illumination, the Word of God, our prayers, our thanksgiving unto God becomes sweeter and sweeter. And then the most holy place in His very presence. And there we will want to stay. Amen. Praise the Lord. So don't be discouraged because of hindrances. We can combat it. Let's pray much for the meeting and uh, God will be with us. The Lord will help us. All right? Satan's real, folks. And I never take anything for granted. The blessing of God in my life and what I enjoy here and now. And it could be taken from me in a moment. You know, I just don't know. Unless I stay close to God and trust Him for my life, who knows what could happen. I pray to God that next year I'm still serving the Lord and being faithful. But I don't know the future. I pray that I will be. By God's grace, I will be. If I do and act and trust the Lord like I know I should, I should be. But Satan is a great adversary. He's a sneaky rascal. 
just because you're in church right now doesn't mean you're going to be in church next week or next month or next year. Listen, you got to fight. Okay? Just don't think, well, God's going to take care of the devil. I'm saved now. God will take care of the devil. <laughs> so you have responsibility, Christian. You have responsibility to humble yourself. Right? To, to pray, seek after God, turn from your wicked ways. That's all your responsibility. And then God said, then I'll heal your land. I'll forgive your sins. But we must do our part. Let's be responsible warriors for Christ. Step up and yes, Lord. I will look to you. I will trust you. It's the only way we're going to make it through this. It's the only way we're going to be faithful. Be found faithful. It's the only way we're going to get to the most holy place. By God's grace, I'm working towards that. Amen? I know. I might not be there right now, but I'm working towards it. Amen? I want to get there. I want to be so sweet that it's, that it's foggy around me. Yes. <laughs> like that glory that filled the temple.